thank you dr birju thank you dr hina uh, at the outset i like to thank dr amit as well as dr ritul for having had invited me for this prestigious conference if you can give me access for screen sharing please Okay. Okay. My screen is visible now. Not yet. Yes. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll put it on full screen. Is that fine? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So thank you and uh, good afternoon to all the delegates who've joined for this webinar. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to talk on a topic which is very relevant uh, if you see in the pregnancy period because uh, these are the two most common endocrine abnormalities that we get to see during pregnancy and that is hypothyroidism and gestational diabetes uh, so without further ado this is the outline of my presentation so i'll try to show, show two short cases Uh, and then i'll try to talk about the pathophysiology of hypothyroidism and gestational diabetes then what does the algorithm uh, as far as the recommendation of management of hypothyroidism in pregnancy in gdm uh, states uh, then there are some other guidelines some national as well as international guidelines which talk about the management of hypothyroidism in pregnancy and even in women who have gestational diabetes and then lastly uh, i'll try to summarize my talk so this is the first case now we have a 33 year old thima gravida now she is a known case of hypothyroidism so she is already taking levothyroxine replacement therapy for her condition for the last 5 years and currently her tsh is around 1 her bmi is 32 and she has a positive family history of type 2 diabetes and in fact her mother had a history of gestational diabetes now the uh, antenatal checkups thus far have been uneventful in the first trimester in fact the tsh was around 1 and in the second trimester at 24 weeks a random blood sugar reveal that it is around 176 so she was advised an ogtt at this point if you see the ogtt result 25 grams glucose load was given the fasting has come to 105 and after giving 75 grams the 1 hr value is 191 and the 2r value is around 178 so she's been diagnosed to having hypothyroidism with gestational diabetes uh, so she's been started with lifestyle modification and basal bolus uh, regimen for the management of gdm and the lt4 doses based on tsh were adjusted subsequently i come to case 2 case 2 again 32 year old female now she's already nearing the third trimester ending the second BMI is 31 she has a positive family history of type 2 diabetes and the antenatal checkup thus far for thyroid has been normal and also the blood sugar monitoring during the first trimester was normal but now at the second trimester towards the end you can see the ogtt results again with 75 grams the fasting is 95 after 75 grams the 1 hr value is 175 and the 2 hr value is around 180 so she has been diagnosed now with gdm and she's put on a rapid acting analog along with lifestyle modification now uh, immediately after a few weeks in the 38th week now of gestation the tsh was measured and it was 8 and if you see the free t4 it has come to 0.2 nanogram per deciliter so hypothyroidism immediately after gdm has been diagnosed and she's been started with a levothyroxine uh, 75 mcg with tsh monitoring to maintain with the target range less than 2.5 tsh so there are two cases here one is a case of hypothyroidism and she develops uh, uh, she then goes on to develop a gdm and here the second case is you have someone who has gdm and then subsequently in the third trimester after few weeks she develops a hypothyroidism looking into the published evidence now there are a lot of studies in fact this is a meta analysis that has clearly depicted that hypothyroidism has a clear role in glucose homeostasis and the development of gestation diabetes there's another recent article published in 2022 and this clearly says that hypofunction of the thyroid gland and gestation diabetes have a relationship now what is the relationship in a hypothyroid pregnant woman 
it is seen that the intestinal uh, absorption of glucose is reduced which is a good thing hepatic gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis comes down so the end result is that the hepatic glucose output and the post absorptive glycemia comes down so that gives a signal to the beta cells that look the blood sugars are within the normal range so you don't have to strain too much to release insulin but the whole catch here is the peripheral insulin resistance hypothyroidism increases peripheral uh, insulin resistance and reduces the glucose disposal also coupled with other hormones that are released from the placenta so you have beta hcg you have human placenta lactogen you have estrogen and progesterone release from the corpus luteum all of these hormones further increase resistance at the peripheral tissues especially the skeletal muscle there is a down regulation of the glut4 receptors so there is a uh, postprandial hyperglycemia that sets in and hyperinsulinemia in the postprandial state so to you uh, know to see in a nutshell this pathophysiology hypothyroidism on one hand can reduce hepatic gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis and reduce the absorption of glucose at the intestine but it enhances the peripheral insulin resistance it reduces the glucose disposal so the end result would uh, result in hyperinsulinemia and eventually that uh, woman developing gestational diabetes here again it is clearly shown the role of the placental hormone so you have the placental human, human chorionic gonadotropin you have the placental growth factor through angiogenic factor and soluble fms like tyrosine kinase one factor now these hormones are known to reduce the sensitivity of tsh to the thyroid gland which means that tsh will not have an adequate stimulatory effect at the thyroid gland to release t3 t4 the end result is a reduced t3 and t4 secretion and tsh eventually to compensate will go up now this is an algorithm that is given by the american thyroid association in 2017 and they clearly said that during the first trimester itself we have to screen for hypothyroidism so we have to look for tsh with reflex free t4 which means you've ruled out any pituitary abnormalities and if tsh is less than 0.1 treat it as hypothyroidism and if it is between 0.1 to 2.5 then it's a normal thyroid function no further workup but if the tsh is between 2.5 to 10 then we will have to obtain a free t4 level if the tsh is more than 10 then immediately you start with levo levothyroxine treatment and if we get a free t4 value which is below the 5th percentile then there again we'll have to substitute with levothyroxine treatment and during the first trimester every 4 weeks we have to monitor the tsh and keep it below 2.5 in the second trimester you can check it at least once to keep it below 3 now suppose the free t4 level is normal and tsh is between 2.5 to 10 then we'll have to obtain the thyroid antibodies if antibodies are negative then treatment is little controversial not recommended ideally but if it is positive then again you go back to starting with levothyroxine therapy monitor the tsh and you follow the same protocol now the indian thyroid society as well as the federation of obstetrics and gynecology society of india they have clearly mentioned that all pregnant women should be screened at the first antenatal visit itself for the tsh levels and this has a grade 2a and class b recommendation and if you take a look at some of the international guidelines you have ata 2017 eta uh, 2014 and even its 2012 all of them have clearly said that during the first trimester you need to keep the tsh less than 2.5 although ata says you can even keep it less than 4 but during the second and third trimester you have to keep it less than 3 there are certain markers which could be indicative of a potential risk of developing gestational diabetes if the person if the woman already has hypothyroidism so free t3 and free t3 to t4 ratio if it is measured early in pregnancy then that can be an independent risk fa factor for developing gestational diabetes and it is shown that an increase in either of these markers can increase the risk of gestational diabetes after adjusting for all confounding factors like the the bmi or even a family history of diabetes 
so if you if you have an increase in free t3 to free t4 ratio the and there is a higher conversion of t4 to t3 then that is again a strong indicator of that woman developing gestational diabetes during the later part of pregnancy ids uh, fokti again have clearly mentioned that if the woman has overt hypothyroidism then we have to look at the tsh level ideally keep it below 2.5 if she was newly diagnosed during pregnancy then the starting dose of levothyroxine should be around 1.6 to 2 mg per kg per day and first trimester maintain it less than 2.5 in pre existing hypothyroid patients you might have to increase the levothyroxine dose by almost 30% and then keep monitoring uh, during the first trimester every 4 to 6 weeks tsh has to be monitored once into the third trimester between 26 to 32 weeks at least once the monitoring of tsh should be done now if you have a youth thyroid pregnant woman with thyroid autoimmunity so here they clearly saying that you'll have to check the tsh you'll have to start levothyroxine and try to keep it below 2.5 in the first trimester and then below 3 in the uh, second trimester so there's a level b and c recommendation now monitoring of thyroid function again here i've already mentioned it has to be done tsh monitoring every 4 weeks and the adjustment for levothyroxine should be done to keep it less than 2.5 in the second and end of second and beginning of third anywhere at least once tsh has to be monitored and tsh has to be kept less than 3 that is my last slide and these are the key take home messages hypothyroidism and gestational diabetes can have interrelated uh, pathophysiologies uh, there is a relationship based on not only genetic factors but hypothyroidism itself can have a negative effect on carbohydrate metabolism and glucose homeostasis so the risk of developing gdm is very high in pregnant women who already have hypothyroidism in fact during the first trimester if a pregnant lady has a tsh more than 2.7 then some of the articles say that the chances of getting gdm increases by eight times and it is crucial to bring it down in order to prevent gdm so on that note i will finish my presentation and stop sharing my slide thank you for a patient here